lecture number 12b the um, the internal combustion engine will be doing some related problems the compression ratio of the air standard ortho cycle is 10 at the beginning of the compression stroke the pressure is 0.1 megapascal and the temperature is 15 degrees centigrade the heat transfer to the air per cycle is 1800 kilojoule per kg of the air determine the pressure and temperature at the end of each processes of the cycle the thermal efficiency and the mean effective pressure uh, this is an example of the auto cycle but we will be uh, we are only looking for the air standard auto cycle that means like we are not looking at the combustion equation we are not looking at the fuel combustion in the process we will be only dealing with the the standard formula for the air uh, not the combustion of the fuel so at one point uh, at uh, the pressure and temperature at the end of each process is, is required then we have got the thermal efficiency and mean effective pressure is required so looking at the PV diagram of the auto cycle so at each and every point we need to find the pressure and temperature so first thing first we have to look at the auto cycle itself so from 1 to 2 we have got the adiabatic compression from 2 to 3 we have got the constant volume heat addition from 3 to 4 we have got adiabatic expansion and from 4 to 1 we have got constant volume heat rejection so looking at the different formula we will be using so from 1 to 2 as the process is adiabatic so the adiabatic process being like pv raised to power gamma would be, would be constant so that mean like p1 v1 raised to power gamma would be equal to p2 v2 raised to power gamma that also mean like p, p2 by p1 would be equal to uh, v1 by v2 raised to power gamma gamma or k uh, that's what we written over here similarly t1 v1 raised to power gamma minus 1 is equal to t2 v2 raised to power gamma minus 1 and that mean like t2 by t1 would be equal to v1 by v2 raised to power gamma minus 1 or k minus 1 as written over here so the value for k uh, for the air is 1.4 for the adiabatic process we'll be taking 1.4 for the k then from from 2 to 3 the process is constant volume heat addition so as i've said earlier in the last lecture so if heat is transferred at the constant volume so q delta q would be equal to delta u plus del sorry delta u plus delta w so as w is zero there is constant volume process so heat transfer would be equal to change in internal energy so that means like change in internal energy q h would be equal to cv delta u3 minus u2 cv delta t and that is equal to cv t3 minus t2 then we have got the adiabatic expansion from 3 to 4 the same formula we have used for the adiabatic compression would be used for the adiabatic expansion from 3 to 4 then uh, obviously for the uh, for 4 to 1 is again the constant volume heat rejection uh, in addition we also we would be also using the formula for the thermal efficiency that is equal to 1 minus 1 over r gamma minus 1 uh, r is the compression ratio which has already been given as 10 over here uh, and the gamma is 1.4 as I already said mean effective pressure is the network divided by the change in the volume or the stroke volume v1 minus v2 so going from step by step let's let's um, find out first the state number one so in state number one the pressure is given the temperature is given we can find easily the volume by using the formula pv is equal to rt and that is v1 would be equal to rt by p1 so r is for the air is 0 0.287 kilojoule per kg kelvin uh, temperature over here is 15 degree centigrade so converting that 15 degree centigrade into kelvin so that would give you as 288.2 kelvin uh, then pressure is 0 0.1 megapascal which is equal to 100 kilopascal 
So V1 would be equal to 0 0.287 multiplied by 288.2 divided by 100, and that give us uh, 0 0.287 cubic meter per kg. Then adding towards the state number two, so state number two is when we have got adiabatic compression. So adiabatic compression, we have already said like we would be having G2 by T1 would be equal to V1 by V2 gamma minus one. In this formula, we have already done the T1, which is actually equal to 288.2. V1 by V2 is the compression ratio, which is equal to 10. Gamma is 1.4, so we can easily find T2 over here. Uh, similarly, for P2, we have already been given P, uh, P1 over here, V1 by V2 over here, and simply putting the value for the uh, gamma and V1 by V2 and P, P1, we will be having P2, which is actually equal to 2. 514 megapascal. Moving ahead to, uh, yes, uh, sorry, uh, we can, uh, yes, we can find V2 over here. We already got V1 and we have already got compression ratio, so V1 by V2 would be is equal to 10. So we have got V2 is equal to V1 by V2. Uh, moving ahead to state number three. Uh, for state number three, we have been given like uh, the process is from two to three is a constant volume heat addition. So constant volume heat addition from Q2 to 3 was equal to Cv T3 minus T2. So from here we can easily find temperature T3 as Q from 2 to 3 is also given which is 1800 kilojoule per kg. So 1800 kilojoule per kg Cv for the air and then obviously 18, uh, uh, T2 is already given which is equal to uh, 288.3, just putting the value and getting the uh, answer for T3, which is actually equal to 233234 three, three, Kelvin. Uh, then uh, you can imagine like the process is constant volume process. So having said that, going for the ideal gas equation, which is PV is equal to RT, and PV by T is equal to R. R is already constant, so that means like PV by T is constant over here. So PV by T is constant. So that also mean like if I'm putting the value uh, going from state two to three, that would mean like T2 V2 by T2 should be equal to P3 V3 by T3. So in this equation, the volume remain constant. So that is P2 by T2 would be equal to P3 by T3. In this uh, uh, question now, we already know the P2. We already know T2. We already know uh, over here T3 as we have already defined it right now over here. So we can easily find P3, which is equal to 11.222 mega Pascal. Now moving ahead to from process three to four, uh, which is adiabatic expansion. So adiabatic expansion would mean like the formula would be T3 by T4 would be equal to V4 by V3 gamma minus one. Now looking at V4 and V3 over here. So V4 is equal also equal to V1. And V3 is also equal to V2. So that mean like the formula for V4 by V1, V3 would be also V1 by V2, which is also the compression ratio. So we already got the compression ratio now. So just putting them value and you can find the temperature T4 over here, which is 1287.5. Going back to uh, this uh, same thing, P3 by P4 would be equal to V4 by V3, and we can find the easily the pressure which is actually 0 0.4467 megapascal. Uh, for the thermal efficiency, uh, putting the value of compression ratio and gamma, we can easily find thermal efficiency, which is equal to 60.2. Make sure this is a standard auto cycle. 60.2 is definitely quite high thermal efficiency for the auto cycle. Normally thermal efficiency of the auto cycle lie between the, the 28, to 32 percent uh, yes if it is a hybrid car 
so that would be a little bit higher as we have got the regeneration in that one uh, but yes for the normal uh, internal combustion engine um, the efficiency is not that much uh, this can also be found by the heat rejection so that means like you, you can find the heat rejection and thermal efficiency 1 minus ql by qh and you can find it from the that equation which is 6.2 as well now for the mean effect of pressure uh, find the work done work done would be equal to net work done would be equal to as we have said earlier as well uh, sorry net work work done would be equal to qh minus ql so finding so we have already got qh we have got we have already now find ql over here so putting the value you can find the network network divided by the stroke volume which is actually v1 minus v2 you can find the mean effective pressure this is the uh, this is the high value of mean effective pressure largely because of the two constant volume heat transfer processes keeping the volume of total volume change to be minimum now moving the moving towards the other example um, of the diesel cycle the a standard diesel cycle has a compression ratio of 20 and the heat transfer to the working fluid per cycle is 1800 kilojoule per kg at the beginning of the compression process the pressure is 0 0.1 megapascal and the temperature is 15 degrees centigrade determine the pressure and temperature at each point in the cycle the thermal efficiency and the mean effective pressure ideally this is the same uh, problem uh, as being done previous over here same kind of uh, same set of um, values but yes we have got now the compression ratio as 20 as we have got the compression ratio higher in a diesel cycle uh, heat transfer is same as 1800 kilojoule per kg initial condition of pressure and and the temperature is same and we have been actually uh, um, asked to find the pressure and temperature at each and every point thermal efficiency and the mean effect of pressure um, beginning the process again we would be having the same condition from state 1 to 2 which is adiabatic compression uh, but from 2 to 3 uh, lastly we would we were having the constant volume heat addition which was Q was equal to CV delta T for the constant volume heat addition but now we have got the constant pressure heat addition so from the heat transfer from 2 to 3 would be equal to CP delta T not CV delta T so we would be using this formula for the heat transfer which is equal to CP delta T um, then the yes for the from process 1 to 2 same equation adiabatic compression would be used from 2 to 3 constant pressure heat addition would be there from from 3 to 4 uh, that is equal to constant uh, adiabatic expansion and obviously from 4 to 1 it would be equal to constant volume heat rejection in the same manner we can find the volume v1 which is equal to pv by uh, pv by rt so p1 v1 is equal to rt1 over here so pv by rt would be uh, p1 would be equal to rt by p1 over here so just putting the value you can find the volume uh, volume v2 would be equal to similarly volume v2 v1 by v2 is given as 20 so volume v2 would be equal to v uh, v1 by by 20 and that would be something like this moving towards the state number two uh, we would be having the cons uh, sorry adiabatic compression so t2 by t1 is equal to v1 by v2 gamma minus 1 so v1 by v2 is 20 gamma is 1.4 for the air t2 is need to be find out and t1 is 288.2 just putting the value you can find t2 as 955.2 uh, similarly for the pressure p2 p2 by p1 is equal to v1 by v2 uh, v1 by v2 is 20 gamma is 1.4 p2 need to be found out while t1 is 0 0.1 megapascal which is also equal to 100 kilopascal so putting the value and you can find the the uh, pressure as 6.629 megapascal uh, moving again uh, for the from process 2 to 3 
state number three uh, we need to find out so state number three is actually heat transfer from at a constant pressure from two to three so cp delta t would be here so cp uh, for the air and then uh, if cp for the air is zero point uh, sorry one point zero zero four um and then we have got the t3 need to find out and t2 is already given and uh, already given me like we have already find out over here uh, so T3 minus T2 would be equal to 1800 minus 1.4 and T3 would be equal to 2748 Kelvin. For volume, uh, for the um, volume V3 actually, um, we have got the equation again, PV by T is equal to constant and if I would say like P2, P2 by T2 is equal to um, P3 V3 by T3 you can find the V3 over here uh, and T yes so we have got T3 over here which is over here which is equal to 0 0.11896 cubic meter per kg for T4 uh, as we have got adiabatic expansion from T to 4 so same formula would be using T3 by T4 would be equal to V2 by V3 gamma minus 1 and you can find V2 4 over here for the heat transfer as we would not need it but yes if uh, heat uh, out of the system that would be equal to uh, q uh, from 4 to 1 would be equal to cv delta t as it is constant volume heat re rejection so cv delta t would be equal to t1 minus t4 and you can check like it is minus 700.4 which means like heat is rejected for the network done 1800 minus 700 point uh, point four would be something like this the efficiency would be equal to 61.1 percent as quite high as well the mean effective pressure would be work done network done divided by the stroke which is equal to network is already there you can find uh, find v2 and v1 already find out so just put in the value and you can find the mean effective pressure which is 1400 kilopascal I hope you understand this thing. If you have uh, still got question, you can post it on the Google Classroom or you can still post it on the YouTube channel and I would be able to answer. Have a nice time.